Welcome everybody to Flat Earth Nation. It is a Flat Earth Nation. Don't let them tell you anything else. Because right now we know they do not have our best interest at heart. But I do and God bless you for being here because I want to share with you everything I can about why I believe Armageddon was the mud flood and what we're going to do about it, what we can do about it how we can learn from the Bible that that's exactly what's been hidden from us in the great deception. I was, uh, Psalm 48 mentions bulwarks. Bulwarks. And, and you look it up in, you know, it can mean palaces. If you look up palaces, there's a lot of palaces in the Bible. Hebrew number 759 in your Strong's Concordance. Amoni. It means a citadel. A citadel. It was a castle one time, palaces 31 times. And it has to be a citadel type. And it, the words donated together are its height. It is elevated. It's like the church in the middle. Because when you study down the other words that are synonymous with palaces, he, the Hebrew Strong's word 1002, 1003, 2038. 2036, 2918. They're all going to be the same thing. It's a large public building. It has a tower, a high tower. And because of its height, it's a citadel of church. It's also used in Strong's 1964 as a call, a call from the 3201 in Strong's. And it has to be a large capacity palace. Palace translated 10 times, temple 70 times. And in the Hebrew dictionary, it's uh, on page 68, if you want to look that up. It's a palace temple. So it's one of those big churches that was reconfigured. And I consider the Middle Ages to be the New Testament period. That's what they lived like. Those were, the star forts were their cities when they said they built a you know, from the foundations, from the ocean up to the high towers and who can assault it. We we see the remnants of those cities and it's very tiresome, isn't it, to say we have no proof that there was a mud flood or an Armageddon, something where the earth swallowed the waters thanking God or the devil was going to, you know, he thought he had the victory. All right. Princes and kings who did what we see carved in the stones on the wall, like Darius and Cyrus. Don't believe the lie that's coming. And it's written in the word, the same people. Princes in the Strong's is 53878269-7333. And, and a few more, 8282 means plural princesses. So, you know, there are those words. In Greek, there's not as many uses as prince twice, captain once. And, and it also can mean the author and finisher of our faith. It's translated author one time, archko, archko in Greek. That's the uh, princes. They are, you know, arch. And then uh, it's a king or a sheik. It will lead you to the word in Strong's 5387. All right. It's also... A rising mist. It covers everything. It's the king. It covers. It's the rulers. It's the one who bears responsibility for the land. And it's a royal. And in Duke, which is the number 441, there were dukes and joshes, was time 1321. And that word is pronounced in Hebrew, aloof. And if they ever say, you know, you're getting too big for your britches, don't act aloof or stand apart. But if you are being aloof because you don't want to bad friends, corrupt good morals, they'll thank you aloof. Because the, the, the overall royalness is accepted hand in hand with obedience to the law of God's moral law. Those were the princes of the lands, those who upheld God's law, and they did rule. Now, how, how did the royals build their cities once, you know, there was kings? You know, God God had different opinions on kings, but they wanted to be like the other nations. I'm speaking of Israel. 
And so how did they do it? Well, there was no room for imperfections. It had to be built within certain tolerances. That's a word that they use now, you know, even tighten the bolts to this tolerance that has to be this tight. In the Bible, it only uses the word tolerable four or five times. It's combinations of a word that implies you have all the means necessary to endure. That's tolerable. But in our era, haven't they tried to make tolerance into something completely different than what you're able to endure? But you do speak out about it. How exactly good at building were they early biblical builders solomon and those people when they wanted to build to impress well i'm going to cite clint eastwood and say do you remember what he said a man has to know his own limitations sometimes if you want to make a building like that to last like the structures i've been showing on the screen that you you have to get professionals and back in the day one time that was a man called hiram and if you uh, lived in his era and you could afford Hiram, you would do whatever it took to get him to build your, your palace, all right? First Kings 6, verse 7. And the house, when it was in building, was built of stone, made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer, axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was building. So that's one, no hammer. Two, no axe. Three, no tool of iron was heard while it was a building. It's built that good where you get it all set. You order the kit like I've been talking. They ship it to you. It takes about four or five years, and in a couple of years, they have it done. 1 Kings 6, 17 and 18, and the king commanded, and they bought great stones, costly stones, and huge stones, that's 1 Kings 17 and 18, to lay the foundations of the house, in verse 18, and Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders did hew them, and the stones quarriers, so they prepared timber and stones to build the house god is also preparing a house is he not amen hallelujah aho i want to praise his name for that because he is building a house and we are being fit together like stones great and beyond knowing are the mercies of god unsearchable are his ways but thank God and his love to Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Deuteronomy 29, 29 again. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of the law now god's ways are beyond knowing but he has revealed to us what we need to know and the biggest hint is that at the end times there's going to be a deception that is so great if possible it could fool even the elect enjoy these pictures i'll be back in one second need to look up Deuteronomy 29 24 let's see Deuteronomy that's in the Old Testament right I think so oh yeah here it is all right Deuteronomy 29 and I wanted to read 24 and 28 even all the nations shall, shall say Wherefore hath the Lord, the Lord done thus unto the land? What meaneth the heat of his this great anger? Then the men shall say, 
because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. So they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not, and whom had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is to this day. And that's as it was to that day. Okay, now I want to skip down to Deuteronomy 30 verses 1 and 3. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt obey his voice concerning to do all that I commanded thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. So that is our job to do, because that's what we're left with at this time. Now, Jesus was a prophet and Moses was a prophet and Moses prophesied that it would happen to his generation. And not one of those who went into the desert, except the, the very few called and chosen, went into the promised land that went in out of Egypt because it happened to that generation. Just like Jesus with the coming of Moses or the coming of John the Baptist said the root is, you know, under the axe, the axe is laid to the root. The winnowing fan is in his hand and it will come upon this generation. And in both times it did. And now I want to read what happened to those people because it says in Deuteronomy 30, 17 through 20, then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day and I will forsake them and I will hide my face from them and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought, in that they are turned unto other gods. Important first coming up. Now therefore write ye this song unto you, and teach the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me, against the children of Israel. And this is to us. And when I shall have brought them into the land, which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. All right. Now, that's the era that we live in. And how come we see the leftover of, of everything that, we can't explain all right there's there is a uh, deuteronomy 32 verse 1 i just want to see what is that song of moses and be listening for the rock that means the god rock that is you know the God rock. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb and the showers upon the grass. Therefore, I will publish the names of the, of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto the Lord. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land. I don't know how much of this I should read. Let me get down to 34. 
I just wanted to read one through three and four that he is the rock. His work is perfect. Okay, so that leaves us with only two basic ideas. I'm going to give you a rough sketch. We live a thousand years or so after Armageddon, which was the mud flood and put us, and they were that those kings and dukes and that were those were the cities. And then the thousand year reign of Christ and the thousand year binding of Satan ran simultaneously. And right now, Satan has been loosed. That's where we're at. Otherwise, Armageddon and the, uh, the biblical time, those kingdoms in Laodicea was right up to World War I. And we slept. Yep, that's what I said. And if that's the case, those out of those two, then we would have had to have slept because it says in Revelation 20, verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. So the possibilities of both. One, we seek Christ while there's still time because Gog and Magog is coming and he is loosed either way. Or two, anything but Christ, and that leaves you Atlantis. That's where the other mud flood part of the movement is going. And Atlantis leads you to Greek law because they do not have God's law. And there will be no law where you will be able to say, no, not my children get taken away to war with a general to be diddled because he needs that every day. And what's the big deal? Children are under a schoolmaster. And what kingdom and what law you live under is what the schoolmaster you put them into. God's law is for purity. And they learn that they want to be pure because the law will help them in the liberty in Christ later in their life. That if they do fall, they have an advocate with the Father. But the schoolmaster doesn't ever want to, you know, teach the wrong thing or not make it known. The schoolmaster stays with the law. It's a child. You must do this. You must do that. This is what God said. This is why. This is where he said it. He's what's best for you. You will live a better life. And you explain it. So I need to, to read Galatians chapter 3, verses 24. And that's right at the end. And then right into the middle of uh, up to Galatians 4, 2. So starting at Galatians 3, 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith came, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from his servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, when we were children, even so we when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time has come and gone, God sent forth his Son, made a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that they might receive the adoptions of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth his Spirit of his Son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. All right, so, and that's the coming of faith. And the time of faith is that when they grow up and they can decide and they realize, yes, I do have faith. Thank God that I believe now that to keep purity, to follow the laws to the best of my ability, one wife and pure to them and, and love them is exactly what I need instead of, well, you know, you can be forgiven if you go do this. You know, you can be forgiven if you go do that. Or don't worry about this and that we all fall, we all fall, we all fall. 
Oh, yes, that will be clear enough to them. All right. To understand the law is this. Teach your children why you are faithful and they need slash are required slash are commanded for their own blessing to be pure actively to continue being pure what is a millstone hanger well i looked up the word and it's in the synoptic gospels and it does mean a millstone and luke even puts it in perspective that it is a millstone large enough that you should use a mule to spin it and that's a pretty big expense when you got to get a mule to turn your millstone and if you are teaching children real young that it's a an easy gospel don't worry go date go make out do this and that just don't go too far it's all gonna be okay we all fall oh well no big deal then you're you're hanging millstones on their head okay and what is that going to do what's the broader aspect of it well you're going to be least in the kingdom i don't want to get into an argument oh well you mean they're still in the kingdom who boy least in the kingdom out of at least probably five stages you're least in the kingdom you're not going to be a ruler in the kingdom you're going to be an amoeba something that would be the equivalent in the body of an asbestos that just diffuses fire all the time and then then you get recycled back into a enzyme again and go fight that fire it, yeah you'll be in the kingdom you'll be least in the kingdom Look, we're talking the Bible in seriousness. We're not talking Tim LaHaye and fairy tales now. Listen to me. The kingdom of God is a much broader aspect. God is the antithesis of man or the world. It has a when you when you use the kingdom of God and look that up in Strong's number nine three two, it shows that it has the moral and spiritual relationship. That's what it's built into. And that you follow that God, that moral and spiritual relationship, which means that you follow that kingdom. And if you follow the worlds where you don't have to, and maybe even just go like, I don't even know if I believe in God. Well, then you're just being a fool, but you have chosen your kingdom. You, am I following the law of what kingdom? Well, that is your king. That is your king. That's who you worship. It's who you fear. Just another old guy who you can call crazy for bringing up Bob Dylan's blood on the track and the quote that you're going to have to serve somebody. It might be the devil. It might be the Lord. But you're going to have to serve somebody. There's three requirements to being saved. You have to be chosen. You have to be called. You have to be faithful. What and why be faithful to Christ? Well, because in him all the fullness of the God head dwells it says in galatians 6 chapter verses 7 and 8 that verse that runs about god is not mocked okay so what do i trust ephesians 1 18 through 2 4 and 7 that let, let's look that up because that is something that some of you guys are going to want to say how is do they where do they even even talk about a time after armageddon all right, Ephesians 1, 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world also in that which is to come how about that amen hallelujah which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is the body the fullness of him that filleth all in all and we are becoming fit stones. All right. Let's just keep going to Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 7. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. That's right. That in the ages to come, after this wicked generation was dealt with, the ages to come, the thousand year reign, and then his short time of loosing is our ages. And it's not of works, least any man should boast. So now, who has not ignorantly said, I wish I had a more exciting life. More exciting than actually living in the Bible times, like you are right now. It's time for you to wake up and shake up your life. Cast aside that sin that so easily besets you. For the author and finish of, finisher of our faith is basically a palace, a temple that we will be fitted and joined into spiritually and possibly physically. The Armageddon mud flood event is the same thing. I've never had a problem with mud flood. My problem was with flood fossils. Amen. Hallelujah. Aho. Now look, this is a flat earth nation. Isn't it not? Amen. Hallelujah. Don't let them tell you anything else. How do you know they have your best interest at heart when they treat you like they do and they act like they don't care? Come on, you guys. You know it's hard for me to end these shows, so I got to just say goodbye.